tuna, shark, king mackerel, tilefish, swordfish. If you've ever been pregnant or known someone who has been pregnant, this list of seemingly random aquatic vertebrates is all too familiar to you. It's the avoid while pregnant list of seafoods, and it's just one of the confusing set of messages surrounding pregnancy and fish consumption. Because aren't we supposed to be eating more fish? Fish are the main dietary source for omega-3 fatty acids, which can cross the placenta and may promote healthy brain development. Of course, some of these fish contain mercury, which, as Jeremy Piven taught us all, may be detrimental to cognitive development. Those contradictory facts led the US FDA in 2014 to recommend that pregnant women consume more fish, but not more than three times a week. You have to love the government sometimes. A study appearing in JAMA Pediatrics is making some waves with its claim that high levels of fish consumption more than three times per week during pregnancy is associated with more rapid neonatal growth as well as higher BMIs throughout a child's young life. Now, contrary to what your mother-in-law has been telling you, more rapid infant growth is not necessarily a good thing, as rapid infant growth is associated with overweight and obesity in childhood and adulthood. But fish as the culprit here? That strikes me as a bit odd. Indeed, prior studies of antenatal fish consumption have shown beneficial or null effects on childhood weight gain. What's going on here? The authors combined data from 15 pregnancy cohort studies across Europe and the US, leading to a final data set including over 25,000 individuals. This is the study's greatest strength, but also its Achilles heel, as we'll see in a moment. But first, the basic results. Fish consumption was based on a food frequency questionnaire, a survey instrument that I and others have a lot of concerns about. Women who reported eating less than or equal to three servings of fish a week had no increased risk of rapid infant growth or overweight kids. But among those eating more than three servings, there was around a 22% increased risk of rapid growth from birth to two and overweight at age six. These effects were pretty small and more importantly, ephemeral. The authors looked not only at the percentage of obese and overweight children, but the raw differences in weight. At six years, though the percent of overweight and obese kids was statistically higher, there was no significant weight difference between children of mothers who ate a lot of fish and those who didn't. When statistics are weird like this, it usually suggests that the effect isn't very robust. In fact, this line from the stats section caught my eye. Take a look. Predicted values were then used to calculate sex and age-specific BMI Z scores and BMI percentile values. That means the authors used numbers predicted by a statistical model to get the weight of the children rather than the actual weight of the children. I asked the study's lead author, Dr. Lita Chatsi, about this unusual approach, and she wrote, quote, not all cohorts had available data on child measurement at the specific time points of interest. In an effort to increase sample size and power in our analyses, we estimated predicted values of weight and height, end quote. So we have a statistical model that contains, as a covariate, another statistical model. This compounds error into the final estimate, and in a study like this where the effect size is razor thin, that can easily bias you into the realm of significance. And at this point, it probably goes without saying, but studies looking at diet are always confounded, always. While the authors adjusted for some things like maternal age, education, smoking, BMI, and birth weight, there was no adjustment for things like socioeconomic status, sunlight exposure, diabetes, race, or other dietary intake. What have we learned? Certainly not as the authors suggest that, quote, contamination by environmental pollutants in fish could provide an explanation for the observed association between high fish intake in pregnancy and increased childhood adiposity, end quote, that they said this in a study with no measurement of said pollutants is what we call a reach. Look, you probably don't want to be eating fish with high levels of mercury when you are pregnant, but if my patients were choosing between a nice bit of salmon and a cheeseburger, well, this study doesn't exactly tip the scales. For MedPage Today, I'm Perry Wilson.